was a very busy day and a busy start to the week as lawmakers returned today from their recess with a long to-do list that includes passing federal funding to address the deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore to many other items as this week begins. It was Maryland Governor Wes Moore meeting with the state's congressional delegation and with Biden administration officials on Capitol Hill today. Lawmakers said an emergency funding bill will be introduced very soon to help address the disaster. Meanwhile, the Arizona Supreme Court ruled an abortion ban from 1864 can be enforced. It will be a major topic in one of the most hotly contested U.S. Senate races in the nation this fall. That's between Republican Carrie Lake and Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego. Robert Costa, Daniela Diaz join us now to talk about all this. Bob is CBS News' chief election and campaign correspondent. Daniela, congressional correspondent for Politico. Bob, let's start with Arizona. Potentially a seismic issue in the presidential race there, in the Senate race there. What's your read of it? Uh, this is just the latest marker in the 2024 campaign where abortion rights is coming to the fore of the national debate. Yesterday, I spent the day covering Vice President Kamala Harris as she traveled to the battleground of Pennsylvania. And what did she do in her remarks before she got on Air Force Two? Talked about abortion rights, talked about former President Trump. Abortion again, bringing this back into the center of the debate for Democrats especially my top sources in the party, they say that they want to keep talking about this issue and that abortion really shows how Roe v. Wade being overturned upended what they believe is women's reproductive rights across the country. They want to make sure they have a laser focus on this to activate their core coalitions and others in the coming months. And just moments after the Supreme Court ruling, the questions were directed at Senator Mitch McConnell during his press conference today. Let's listen to what Senator McConnell had to say. I haven't taken a look at it yet, but I'm certain, as you are, that this whole issue will continue to unfold during the course of the campaign. Nothing terribly unequivocal from Senator McConnell for his thoughts there. That may be the reality for Republican leaders right now, Daniela. What's your read on how this impacts the Senate race, which, of course, is pivotal there, too? Well, and you saw Carrie Lake come out and, and endorse a 15-week ban and come out against the Arizona ruling, which is incredibly telling about how things are right now in Arizona. It's going to be probably the most decisive issue ahead of November. Not only that, of course, immigration in, in Arizona, but it's telling that a lot of these Republican senators, I've chatted with dozens in the last two days since Trump came out with these comments, are skittish about commenting on this. And a lot of them are saying we agree with Trump, even those that backed Lindsey Graham's 15-week abortion ban in Congress to just two years ago. I mean, Lindsey Graham himself is furious and feuding with Donald Trump on social media. So this is really, really going to be tricky for them. And Senator Graham today asked about Donald Trump's rebuke of Senator Graham's rebuke of Donald Trump, said yep. the country's with him. Senator Graham thinks the nation supports his position that a 15-week ban is the right policy move. How do you read the Senate's view on abortion and a federal ban right now? I think they're figuring that out in real time. I mean, we just saw McConnell really not give a direct answer, saying he hadn't even seen the, the decision. That's probably, he, of course, probably saw it. It's, it's tricky. I have, like I said, spoken to dozens of Senate Republicans who are all over the field on how to handle this. Uh, some of them said they you know, texted Trump after and said that they endorsed and were happy with his comments. A lot of them uh, saying that they obviously agree with him, but it's not the best position for some of these lawmakers to go into November without a definitive stance on abortion, and Trump kind of left it to them. Such a remarkably thorny issue at this moment in time. I think the fact that it coincides in Arizona, Bob, with a ballot measure on abortion mm -hmm. makes it particularly volatile, doesn't it? It, it really does, and all eyes are going to be on Arizona. This was already one of the most hotly contested Senate races in the country. Let's move to an issue that's not supposed to be thorny. It's not supposed to be tricky. Emergency relief money for Maryland. Any other time in Congress, those things tend to move swimmingly and swiftly. Mm -hmm. But there's concern. It gets tied up in what is already a gridlock Congress. Governor Wes Moore met with the congressional delegation today. Let's listen to what the governor had to say after the meeting. The meeting today was very emblematic of the kind of support that the state of Maryland has had from the very beginning. Because about two weeks ago, a part of our soul fell into the Patapsco River. Does this have the potential to get tricky, or am I, am I misreading the situation? Sometimes a picture tells a thousand words. Uh, if you look at the image we just saw of Governor Westmore of Maryland, who's standing behind him? 
Congressman Andy Harris mm -hmm. of Maryland, one of the arch conservatives in the House, a member of the Tea Party caucus, an ally of former President Donald Trump to some extent. And he's there standing with the Democratic governor of Maryland because, as you said, uh, for many involved with this issue, infrastructure, this bridge is a bipartisan issue. And, and there's a, a human side to this story. I, I actually just coincidentally flew over the Baltimore mm -hmm. Bridge last night, and it's jarring, devastating to see this gap in the water. And you can see that if by Andy Harris being there, by the Democrats, uh, the Democrats in that delegation all coming together, Secretary Buttigieg there on Capitol Hill, they're trying to come up with some consensus. It's going to be a negotiation to some level, but I'd be surprised if they just let this linger in an election year. The Freedom Caucus, the conservative members of the Republican conference, made clear what they don't want. They don't want this spending to go, even for a vital issue, without cuts elsewhere to help pay for it. They don't want any of those pieces of the bill that may require union labor or other regulations that oversee major projects. Where does this go from here? Well, Andy Harris just said you know, hours ago during that press conference that he plans to talk to his colleagues on the, in the House Freedom Caucus and trying to convince them that this is really important. I spoke to David Trone recently as well about this issue last week, and he told me that this is a bipartisan issue and he's going to pitch it that way. This is affect, this is jobs. This is affecting Americans. That is the largest import, that bridge or that port for cars in the country. They're going to really emphasize those things as they go forward. But Andy Harris, of course, really emphasizing that there needs to be cuts on regulations so they can move this quickly. And I expect that's what we're going to hear from him going forward. The congressional week just began. They've already rumpled up and thrown out the calendar. There will be no presentation tomorrow of impeachment articles against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The Senate won't take this up till next week. Um, where does this head? Does it head anywhere productively, politically, for either side? This is not an issue I'm hearing about from voters when I'm on the campaign trail. They talk about border security, but they haven't personalized it to the extent that congressional Republicans have with this impeachment process against Secretary Mayorkas. For Congressional Republicans, this could be a moment to continue to talk about the border, to cast blame on the Biden administration. But Mayorkas is not someone who's well known. Uh, so they've picked a target that's well known in Washington, but not in the country. It's a focusing agent for the party. But uh, when I talk to Republican strategists, they really see this as a way to rouse the core Republican vote across the country rather than convince people nationwide that there's somehow a real gap in the Biden administration's policy. From your reporting, Daniela, why do you think this thing got moved? It's a relatively provocative move to shift something off the calendar you had great plans on moving on this week. Well, Scott, you and I both know, but maybe people back home don't know, that Congress tends to only work usually Tuesday to Thursday. And Republicans really want to emphasize that this is happening as just adding to what he said uh, and try to really rally up the base. And that's why they're, instead of sending it over tomorrow as what plans, they want to start the week with it next week and really drag out the news cycle so that it, they could reach voters back home and so that they know that this is happening. And Democrats are going to try to dismiss this. Republicans are going to try to stop that. Bob, the sources you talk with consistently, the Republicans want to talk about some variation of border security. They're playing in their space when they have some form of this conversation. That's it's, We're going to hear about this the rest of the campaign season. A lot of what's happening with Secretary Mayorkas is about the leadership in the House trying to make sure that the right flank feels satisfied with the new speaker Mike Johnson, who's facing such a political crucible almost every day in terms of his own political survival. By moving forward on some of these fronts, he's satiating the political appetites of those who might have questions about his leadership. But it seems like that appetite is never fully satisfied by those who continue to criticize him. Just a moment left, Daniela. What's your estimate as to when somebody makes a move and Marjorie Taylor Greene makes her move on Mike Johnson? That is to be decided because she I don't even think she's really figured out yet when she plans to do that. I really think this is going to be a very similar situation. I've written about this to what Mark Meadows did to John Boehner mm -hmm. um, that time when he dusted off that when that little to known motion to vacate. Uh, and I think it's going to be held over Speaker Johnson's head. And that is the intention from Marjorie Taylor Greene to remind him I have this. I can trigger it at any point. So you got to listen to me. Daniela Diaz, Robert Costa. Thanks for covering a lot of ground. We appreciate you.